Hello guys and welcome to our new lesson, Unit 2 C, Feelings from our General English course, American English File 1, Level A2. This is Roya from Roja's YouTube channel and today we're going to focus on our next lesson. But before we start, I would like to remind you that we are working on the third edition of the book American English File 1. So to keep up with this course and be able to learn from it, you need the book or the ebook. Doesn't really matter. Um, so however you feel more comfortable, but uh, you need the book so that you can um, keep up with us. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel now and let's get started. So, today's overview. We are going to start with the vocabulary section about adjectives for feelings. And then we will have a grammar section about imperative and let's. Then we go for pronunciation and we learn about connected speech and linking. And finally, we will have a speaking and listening lesson. Now, it's summer. The sun is shining. It's 12 p.m. and I don't really feel well. The weather is so hot. So I'm hot. That's how I feel. Of course, we have another hot, which means attractive, but we're not talking about that now. We're talking about a feeling of being hot. And the same thing happens in winter. You get another feeling. And then you say, it's cold or I'm cold. You feel cold. How do you feel? Section one, vocabulary. So let's start with page 18. You need to see section one, vocabulary of feelings. So in part A, we have some emojis and we have some words which are adjectives for feelings below them. So please match the words and pictures in one or two minutes. Now to check them, look and listen, you can listen to track 2.13. Don't forget to repeat the phrases after you hear them, or you can just look at my slide and repeat after me. So number five, I'm angry. So when someone does something wrong, you become angry. You feel angry. Number 11, I'm bored. That means you have nothing to do, so you feel bored. Number nine, I'm cold. That means it's very cold outside or it's freezing, so you feel cold. Number 12, I'm frightened. If something scary happens to you, you become frightened. Number two, I'm happy. Feeling happy just means that you feel good, joyful. Number four, I'm hot. So that means the temperature in the room or outside is very hot and that's how you feel. Number six, I'm hungry. That means you need something to eat. Number 10, I'm sad. Sad is the opposite of happy. So if you feel down, if you don't feel good or joyful, you are sad or unhappy. Number eight, I'm stressed. That means I have a lot of stress. Number three, I'm thirsty. It means I need water or some liquid to feel better. Number seven, I'm tired. So if you've had a long day or worked a lot, you feel tired. And number one, I'm worried. If you're worried, you're afraid that something bad might happen. 
Now, please pay attention that we use the verb be with adjectives of feelings or normally with adjectives. So we say, I am hungry. Am is the present form of the verb be, like is and are. So we can also say, he is hungry or we are hungry. In some languages, they may say it in another way, but remember that in English, you need to use the verb be. So you don't say, I have hungry or something like that. You say, I am hungry. Now you tell me, how do you feel today? Section two, listening and reading. So in this section, you're gonna listen to a series of conversations between a couple, Lisa and John, with a baby who are in a car going on vacation. So for part A, please listen to track 2.14 and look at the pictures that you see on page 18. How does each person feel? As you see, the first one has been done for you. Picture one, Lisa angry. That means in picture one, Lisa is angry. So for picture two, for example, you have to say, how does John feel or how does Henry feel? And so on. Please listen to track 2.14 and do this now. All right, let's check the answers. In picture one, Lisa's angry or stressed. In picture two, John's thirsty and Henry's hungry. In picture three, Lisa's cold and frightened and John's hot. And in picture four, Lisa and Henry are tired. You can listen to track 2.14 once more and read the story on page 19 at the same time to check your answers again. After you've done this, please look at part C and listen to track 2.15 to the end of the story. Please pause this video and do it. Okay, so is it a happy ending? Yes. A police officer stops John because he's driving too fast, but the police officer isn't angry with them because of Henry, and they go to their hotel. Now, let's look at a transcript together. You can also find it on page 118 in your student book, or you can just look at a slide here. So L is Lisa, J is John, and P is police woman. Remember that for this job, we have two words. We have police man, who is a man, and police woman, who is a woman. But you don't call them police man and police woman when you see them on the street. So you normally call them officer, and it doesn't matter if they are a man or a woman. You just say officer, like hello officer. Okay, so Lisa starts. The Highland Hotel's 20 miles from here. Let's go there. 20 miles? No problem. John, slow down. So slow down means drive more slowly. You're going too fast. Oh no, here she comes. Good evening. Turn off the engine, please. Thank you. So this is the police woman. And she asks them to stop the car and turn off the engine. The engine is the system or the machine inside your car that makes it move. When you turn on the engine, your car moves. And when you turn it off, it stops working. What's the problem, officer? The problem? Well, 70 miles an hour is the problem. That's very, very fast. The limit on this road is 50 miles an hour. Can I see your driver's license? 
the limit. So the limit here is the maximum speed they can drive on this road. Can I see your driver's license? So what's the driver's license? It's a document that shows you are eligible to drive a car. So um, that's an official document. 70, oh, uh, I'm very sorry, officer. Uh, what a beautiful baby. What's his name? Henry. He's very tired, officer. And it's 20 miles to our hotel. Well, okay, go to your hotel, but please slow down. Yes, thank you, officer. Goodbye, sir, madam. Goodbye, Henry. Okay, so we had a happy ending. Now you tell me, are you more similar to John or Lisa on car trips? Section three, grammar. So on page 19 in the story, you can see some highlighted phrases. Please look at those phrases again and then complete the chart in part A for grammar. We have two charts. We have imperatives and we have suggestions. Please do this in two minutes. Let's look at the answers now. So for imperatives, we have a positive and negative form. So for the positive form, turn right, be careful, look for a hotel. So as you see in this sentence or in these uh, phrases, we tell people what to do, turn right, be careful, look for a hotel. So I tell you what to do. And in the negative form, don't turn left, don't drive fast, don't worry. So again, you're telling someone what to do, but this time actually you're telling them what not to do because it is negative. And for suggestions, we use let's. Let's stop for some food. That's a suggestion. It means you and I can stop and get some food and eat. Yeah, let's do that. I'm, I'm suggesting this. Or let's go there. Let's not stop. That's the negative form. Now, you should go to page 126, the grammar bank 2C, with the topic imperatives and let's. So first, on the left side, you see a white box with two examples for each of these structures. You can listen to track 2.16 or just repeat after me. Open the door. Turn right. Don't worry. Don't stop. Be quiet, please. Please sit down. Let's go home. Let's not stop. Okay, now I'm going to explain all the notes on the right side of this part. So we use imperatives to tell somebody to do or not to do something. So we generally have two forms of imperatives, the positive form and the negative form. For the positive form, we use the base form of verb, like stop. And for the negative form, we use don't plus the base form of verb, don't stop. And we add please sometimes to be more polite, like close the door, please, I'm cold. You can also make a polite request with can, like can you close the door, please? This is also polite. Now, we often use be plus adjective in imperatives. For example, be quiet, be careful. 
And we don't use a pronoun with imperatives. So we say be quiet, but we don't say you be quiet. Of course, you may hear it in movies sometimes, in everyday conversations, but that's very informal and it's not the right structure. But it's possible to hear that in speaking, when people speak. So, next part is about let's. Let's is actually let us. And we use it with infinitive, but the base form, so it doesn't have to. We say, for example, let's go to the movies. And we use it to make suggestions which include the speaker. That means I say, let's go to the movies. And it means I want to go with you. So that means we want to go to the movies. Or the negative form, let's not eat here. Again, let's not plus base form of verb to make negative suggestions. Now please turn to page 127, part 2C, part A. Let's do some exercises. Complete with a verb from the list and use a positive or a negative imperative. So we have a list of verbs. You need to read the sentences and decide if you need a positive or a negative imperative. Please pause the video and do exercise A. Okay, let's check now. So the example is already done for you. A, it's hot. B, open the window. A, I'm very sorry. B, don't worry. It's okay. So for number one. A says, I'm bored. So B says, read a book. The answer is read. Number two, A says, Me puedes dar una fotocopia, por favor? <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, I don't think I pronounced it the right way, but it's another language. So B, this is an English class. Please don't speak Spanish. Don't speak is the answer. Three, A, I'm tired. B, it's late. Go to bed. The answer is go. Number four, is this show good? B, no, it isn't. Don't watch it. Don't watch is the answer. Number five, I'm hungry. B says, have a sandwich. So the answer is have. Six, it's a dangerous street. B, yes, be careful. B is the answer. Number seven, it's raining. B, take an umbrella. The answer is take. And finally, number eight, it's dark. I'm frightened. B says, don't be frightened. I'm here with you. Okay, so let's go for part B now. Complete with let's or let's not and a verb from the list. Please pause and do it. Let's check now. So again, the example is done for you. It's hot, let's open the window. Number one, come on, it's late, let's go. Let's go is the answer. Number two, it's 11 p.m. Let's turn off the TV and go to bed. Number three, this exercise is difficult. Let's do it together. Number four, let's not take a taxi. They're very expensive. The bus is fine. Number five, there is a rest area. Let's stop and have a coffee. And number six, it's very cold. Let's not go, let's watch, uh, sorry, let's not go to the movies, that's for the first gap. Let's watch a DVD at home, that's for the second gap. Nice job. Now, to finish up the grammar part, let's go back to page 19. 
Below the story, you can see part C, and there are some signs. We have nine signs. What do they mean? So you know sign is um, something like a picture or um, something that you see somewhere that tells you to do something or not to do something. And we also have a list of verb phrases. So please make positive or negative imperatives with the verb phrases. For example, the first and second one are done for you. The first one, the first sign says turn left. Or the second one says don't smoke here. What about the others? Okay, let's check. So three says don't eat or drink here. Four, turn off your phone. Five, don't take photos. Six, don't go in here. Seven, cross the road now. Eight, be careful. And nine, don't listen to music here. It's good that you repeat the phrases a few times to learn them better. Now, where do you usually see these signs? Can you say it? For example, the first one, turn left. You normally see it on the street. What about the second one? Maybe in a restaurant or at a gas station. What about number three? Maybe inside a store or a shopping mall. Number four. Maybe inside the cinema or the movies. What about number five? You may see it at the museum. Number six, usually on the road. Number seven, again on the road or on the street. Number eight, it's the same on the road or on the street. Or uh, maybe somewhere that they are doing some construction work, maybe where they are working on the street. And number nine, I don't remember seeing this sign anywhere. Do you? Section four, speaking. For this speaking section, we should go to the communication part of the book, page 103 and 109, but you can stay on page 103 because you're going to play student A and I'm going to be your partner, student B. So please stay on page 103. Let's have a conversation first. Um, here, I will play A and you play B and let's repeat the phrases and the questions. So. What's the matter? Cheer up. Nice. Now you play A and I will play B. Please start. I'm sad. Okay. Now it's also possible to change this. For example, um, I can answer you in a different way. If you're A again, you can ask what's the matter and I can say I'm hungry. And then you can suggest something else. For example, um, get a pizza. And then I say, okay, I'll do it. So it's flexible. You can change the phrases and the answers. Now, let's go to the next part. You are a student A and you're going to ask the question, what's the matter four times? And each time, I'm going to give you a different answer. When I give you each answer, you have to respond with one of these phrases you see here. Like, don't worry, it's okay, or take a vacation, or blah, blah, blah. So it depends on what I say. For example, if you ask me, what's the matter, and then I say, I'm thirsty, 
then you have to say have a drink. Okay, so now let's do it. You are student A, so you ask the question, what's the matter, four times. Please start, ask for the first time. I'm hot. Okay. Second time. I'm thirsty. Yeah, I'll do that. Third time. I'm worried. Oh, okay. And fourth time. I'm stressed. All right, nice job. Now, um, this, I'm uh, gonna ask you the questions this time. And your answers for each question will be the blue text or the blue phrases you can see on the screen now. So, what's the matter? Read a book. Good, let's go for number two. What's the matter? Close the window. Nice, let's go for number three. What's the matter? Sit down. And let's go for number four. What's the matter? Have a sandwich. Section five, pronunciation. So this pronunciation section is about linking or let's talk about connected speech. So when people speak fast, they don't pronounce each word in a sentence separately. They tend to run them together and this can make it difficult to hear what has been exactly said. So let's look at this example on the left side of the slide. We have turned on the TV. So in everyday conversations, people don't normally say, turn on the TV. Yeah, they don't pronounce each word separately. They run them together. They link them. They say, turn on the TV. That's linking and that's connected speech. So, often if a word ends with a consonant and the next word begins with a vowel, they link them together. For example, good idea. Good ends with d, and that's a consonant. And idea starts with a, and that's a vowel. So, you can link them. Good idea. Or in the example you see on the slide, turn on the TV, turn on. Yeah, turn ends with n, and that's a consonant. And on starts with a, and that's a vowel. So you can link them. Turn on the TV. Now, please listen to track 2.17 and write down six sentences. Okay, the next step is to repeat the sentences a few times so that you can learn them better. Let's look at them. Turn off your phone. Let's see it at the cafe. Take a book with you. Let's open the windows. Let's stop at a hotel. Don't open the door. Section six, video listening. At the end of each even unit, we have a video listening. So this time, the first video listening is about car trips. And we have a video for that called Have a Safe Trip. So if you have a DVD with your book, um, you can just watch the video on that DVD or you can go to online practice if you have access to the online practice resource uh, from American English File 1 or you can just um, go to the link that I put 
uh, below this video in the caption and watch the video. But before you do that, we're going to look at some words and their meanings. So the first word is car trip. What is a car trip? So you can also say road trip. Um, it's another word for that. It's a long trip or holiday taken by car. So you take your car maybe with your family and your stuff and then you go to different places. You actually drive your car to different places um, to enjoy your holiday. Another phrase that we have is have a safe trip. So this is um, like a wish. Huh? When somebody wants to go on a trip, you tell them have a safe trip. It means I hope you get to your destination safely and happily uh, or healthy. And a tip is a piece of advice that somebody gives you or maybe you give someone. So now here in this video we have a program about car trips and you also have 10 tips on page 19. So you need to watch the video and pause after each tip and complete the sentences. Please stop this video or pause this video and do this exercise. Okay, let's check the answers now. So tip number one is already done. Plan your trip. Number two, check your car. Number three, listen to traffic information on the radio. Number four, take a map with you in the car. Number five, take bottles of tablets. Number six, take books, games, and check with you. Oh, um, sorry, I mixed up a few. So number five is water. Take bottles of water with you. And number six, take books, games, and tablets with you. Number seven, check that all the passengers in the car have their seat belts on. Number eight, check that you have gas. Number nine, after driving for two hours, stop for 15 minutes. And number 10, don't use your phone. Now we're going to look at a transcript. Have a safe trip. So here are 10 top tips to make your car trip safe. Tip one, plan your trip. Look at a map and plan where to stop on the way. Tip two, check your car. Is it ready for a long trip? Do it yourself or take it to a garage. All right, so we have a new word here, a garage. You may already know another meaning of this word. So a garage is usually a building where we keep a car. Maybe it's part of your house, but here it has another meaning. Garage here means a place where cars are repaired. So that means if you need to check your car before a long trip, um, you need to take it to a garage so they can check it and if it has a problem, they can repair it quickly. Tip three, listen to traffic information on the radio or check on the internet before you start your trip. Tip four, take a map with you in the car or have a map app on your phone. GPS isn't always right. Tip five, take bottles of water. People are often thirsty on long car trips. Tip six, if you have children in the car, take books, games, and tablets with you. Then the children can watch videos or read. When children are quiet, the driver is less distracted. So here we have the second word, distracted. It's an adjective. And it means nervous or confused because you are worried about something. So if the children make a lot of noise and nag, 
it's obvious that the driver will feel distracted and that is not good. Tip seven, check that all the passengers in the car have their seat belts on. So passengers are the people who are in the car with you when you're traveling and seat belts. A seat belt is a belt that fastens around you when you're traveling in a car. So it holds you in your seat and it reduces the risk of um, being injured in an accident. Okay, tip eight, check that you have gas. Don't wait until your gas tank is nearly empty before you look for a gas station. Tip nine, after driving for two hours, stop for 15 minutes, have a snack. So snack is something you can eat um, between your meals and get some fresh air. If you're very tired, have a coffee or a drink with caffeine. Finally, tip 10. This is very, very important. Don't use your phone. Calling and texting are very dangerous because you don't concentrate on the road. Have a safe trip. And the word concentrate means focus. To direct your attention towards a particular activity so that you can think about it more. Good job. Now decide on your top three tips. Which of these tips do you think are the top three? Do you have any tips of your own that you can add to these? Thanks a lot, you guys. I hope you've had a productive and great session today. And if you have any questions, you know what to do. Um, join us on Telegram because we have exercises that are related to these lessons on our Telegram channel. Also other tips that we put there. And like this video if you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you soon with another video, which is the next lesson from our general English course level A2. So have a great time and see you soon.